If you want to install Jekyll on Windows, the first thing you need to do is head over to rubyinstaller.org slash downloads and download the Ruby installation with dev kit. You can see I got version 2.7.2 here. It's about 100 and what, 130 megs in size. It's not giant, uh, but it's not insignificant. It does take a second for it to download there. Boy, what a busy downloads folder I have. Now let me find it. I think they've got it alphabetical here. That always messes me up. Oh, I can see it right there. There's the Ruby installer. Just give it a, a hard double click. Accept the license agreement. Uh, choose all the options here, uh, including adding Ruby to the path and stuff. I don't like the default location. I just like to install it into C underscore tool slash Ruby. That's where I put everything. Uh, accept the option to run a couple of commands after the installation is done. That will just allow you to install all of the required gems and stuff. Um, also makes it easier than having to run the command on your own. It just gives you a little drop down box of, of what to select. Actually, not even a drop down box. You just have to type in a number one, two, or three. And that gets you pretty close to having Ruby installed, although there is a next step after that where you actually have to install the uh, Jekyll gem. I said having Ruby installed may mean having Jekyll installed. So I'm just going to uh, speed this up here, uh, but that's the way you kick it off. We're not done yet, though. So that gives us a Ruby install, but doesn't give us Jekyll installed. We've got to install this RIDK install right now. You know, it's pretty easy to do. All I have to do is click one, two, or three. I'm going to click three to install the entire development tool chain, uh, but this will make it easy for us to install Ruby gems. Uh, otherwise, we might have some problems installing everything that comes with Jekyll. So just let this run. And then after this, we'll almost be ready to install Jekyll. Okay, that's done. It asks us if we want to install it again. No, we don't. Um, open up a command prompt and eventually we're going to create a blog. So open up your command prompt to a location where you want to create that blog eventually. Uh, I'm going to put mine in underscore tools. However, we're not ready for that yet. We still haven't installed Jekyll. So we actually have to run a command and that command is a gem install Jekyll bundle. Gem install Jekyll. Oh, I just I typed in Git there. Didn't mean to do Git. Sorry. I'm doing a lot of work with Git, and I've got Git on the mind. It is Gem install Jekyll bundler. Okay. And now that is going to install Jekyll. It'll just take a, a second to run. And then after this, we're going to be ready to actually create our blog and then run that blog on port 4000. Okay, and now that's completed, the next thing to do is just check to make sure Jekyll's been installed. So you can do a Jekyll-V command, and that should print out which version of Jekyll you are using. And there we go, 4.1.1. And with Jekyll installed, we can now create a new blog. And so you just issue the command Jekyll new my blog. You notice that's run from the C underscore tools folder. If I actually dig into my Windows Explorer and actually look at my file system, if I go into underscore tools, boy, I got a whole bunch of whole bunch of different folders open here. There we go, underscore tools. Now they confusingly make it alphabetical. So I'm gonna have to find, there's Ruby, where is my blog? Yes, there it is. And you can see, you know, all of the different files in there. So that's the tool created. I'm going to move into that folder, CD my blog, then issue the bundle exec Jekyll serve command. That'll actually cause my project to be compiled. And then if I go to localhost 4000, there we go. Jekyll is running. And there you go. That's how easy it is to install Jekyll on Windows. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, head over to theserverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. I've got lots of great tutorials on enterprise software development. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.